Hey, as you guys could tell by the title of this video, um, I wish if it was clickbait, but unfortunately it's not. They had us scamming people, swindling people for their money. Yes, I did that, and you would do it too for a check. I was an employee and I was gonna get employee of the month and that's on period. <laughs> I was making bank. I was making bank for a eighth grader, a 13 year old. Hey guys, it's Jan Chrisanne, first name Jan, middle name Chrisanne, oh, welcome back or to if you are new. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to join the JC crew and today, as you guys could tell by the title of this video, um, I wish if it was clickbait, but unfortunately it's not so yeah i'm gonna be giving you guys a story time on basically how i was scamming people at the age of 13. <laughs> yeah um watch the full video watch the entire video so you can actually get the story this is gonna be a very interesting kind of lengthy story time so you might want to grab your snacks your drinks whatever your popcorn because we're in for a ride before we have into this video make sure you guys follow me on all my social medias they're gonna be somewhere on the screen and in the description box down below and without further ado let's just hop right yeah i'm actually video. filming in a different place a different setting i never usually film i never filmed here before but yeah i just had to acknowledge that and um if i if i don't look fine i'm not because i'm kind of sick but so um this was back in eighth grade this was in the beginning of eighth grade around september or october um so let me tell you guys how it all started so uh my brother and my cousin found out about this like job or little program thing i know the video just started but i just had to add something real quick before we actually found out about the program we would usually see like the flyers about it around the neighborhood they had basically like eye-catching things on the posters like sneakers field trips um just like like things that would catch a teenager's eye where you could make money as a teenager right so they told me about it and i was like okay like i was down because you know i'm where the money resides you know what i mean i was like yeah i'm down i don't even know if they actually explained to me what it was but they said it was a way to make money so i'm like yep mm -hmm. i was a hustler baby so they told me about it and they also told my mom and my aunt about it right oh they found out about it through some kid that all that was also in this program or whatnot the supervisors they would come to our school to pick up this kid that's also in the program as well right so i guess like they talked to my brother and my cousin i explained to them what it was and they were on board of the idea they got the number for this program thing and everything and they gave the number to my mom and my aunt because you know they had to um they had they wanted information about this program so my mom and my aunt called the this one of the supervisors or whatnot and he basically explained everything or whatnot. Yeah, so they got on board with the idea. And this program, this job thing would would go on in the weekdays and also the weekends. Except one day in the weekday that we had a day off. I think it was like Tuesday. But besides that, we it was a, a job from Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So six days out of six days out of the week, basically. So long story short, we was okay to start literally the next day, right? So the next day comes and it was like a weekday the supervisors come to pick us up us as in my brother my cousin and i and also the kid that was already in the program so they pick us up and whatnot and they pick us up in this van this like minivan or whatnot it was like a white minivan that could take around like eight people max the two front seats in the back was like it was like two rows yeah it was two rows in the back and it was you know two front seat driver passenger whatever and it was like a pull van. So like two doors in the front and then you got to pull the back. It was like one of those like mom vans or whatnot with all the kids in the back. Yeah, that kind of van. That's suspicious. That's weird, but whatever. We get picked up around like three, right? And we were the first ones to get picked up because we got out of school the earliest. We got out of school at 2.15, right? So we were always the first set of kids to get picked up for this little job or whatnot. So we get picked up and I'm just like introducing myself to them. Oh, wait, I'm going to name them. There was Big Dog and Little Dog. Yes, I got that from Queen Killer Story Time. But Big Dog was like basically like the boss, the one that was like really in charge. Like he was kind of the strict one. And then there was Little Dog, which was the one that was like the kind of lenient one, you know, whatever. So they're like explaining to me in a way, like basically telling me how this program works. So they're like, oh, basically what we do is swindle people we swindle white people 
for their money basically that's what they said to me so let me tell you guys how this program went what we did was they gave us like item they gave us candy and like this container it was like a it was like a kind of hefty container like it was like a kind of flat container but there was candy in there like there was there was chocolate peanut clusters gummy bears tootsie rolls all of that basically the candy that would buy white people's heart that would take white people's money right basically that kind of candy there and there was also candles and stuff like that basically the shit that white people will buy so that's that's what we'll have like in our container or whatnot and we will go out there to sell them but in order for us to sell those those candies or whatnot like we have to like say specific lines you know basically swindling them anyways long story short we were on our way to like our destination i have no idea where we we're going like i really had no clue where we were going oh i forgot to tell you guys they were also picking up other kids as well so we weren't the only ones and I think it was like six of us in the back or something like that. But usually the back of that van would be packed. We would be packed like sardines, literally, especially on the weekends. But we're not going to get into that yet. As we're on our way there, they're also expanding the program more. So basically, there was there was this card that we had, which was the card that every every child would get when they go out to sell the items. And on the card, it was basically like a a nice representation of this job, like saying like just saying that the money goes to charity like it goes to our trips and stuff like that how we're like this nice program that's a that's for a good cause that's what that's what the the pamphlet or whatever was saying we would use this pamphlet to hand to customers or whatnot to persuade them to buy we had to say some lines and this was literally my line hi my name is jan i'm so teens that say no to bullying, drugs, and violence. And my goal for today is to fundraise all the items in my bin to go towards charity and also fund me on my next field trip. That was exactly my line. Sometimes I'll add a little pizzazz to it, but this is what I was saying all the time. Like I would say that line a thousand times in literally one hour. So we had our lines. Everybody would like add their little pizzazz to it, but that's what I was saying. So we had to like swindle these people for their money basically me and my cousin and i we were new like we had to memorize the lines in a way so we get to like this suburban neighborhood in brooklyn so we're there and there was two options there's two options you, one you could do house to house or you could do retail so house to house was you know when you would go house to house to try to sell candy to people and two retail was where you would just stand in front of a store or any mall and you would try to get customers you know that's coming that's coming in and out first they made me try house to house i was nervous i was scared because you're going house to house that's kind of that's weird that's suspicious but oh yeah little dog was the one that would like train the new kids or whatnot on how to what to do when it was like house to house so little dog was like kind of helping me like when we did the house to house so the first house that we went to he kind of did the sale but he didn't make a sale so he was like helping me and whatnot and i'm like uh-uh i don't like this like and I'm in my head, I'm thinking like, what if there's a dog, like, and it just start barking or some shit like that? Yeah, I was count me out. I tried house to house, wasn't in my favor, did not like it. So then they dropped me off at a CVS in front of a CVS, cause you know there was retail, so you could just stand in front of this in front of the store, and as people come in and out, you say your line, present the card, hold the card up like this, right? And then you have your bucket on the floor, well, your container on the floor. And every time somebody would come, you have to hold it and be like, Hi, my name is Jana from the Club. She's in Audible and Jugs Wallens. So they dropped me off there around like 4 30 ish. Mind you, this was on a, this was on a school day, a, a school day. We had school the next day, right? So around like 4 30, I get dropped at the CVS. I was like, Oh my God. I was terrified i was i was so scared nervous whatever while i'm standing out there bro first of all i was getting cold i was getting hungry i think on my first day i only made like five sales or something like that i'm not sure but i didn't make a lot yeah that's what we had to do basically we had to sell candy to people oh and i didn't get into this but the money didn't go to charities we would say it was going to charities but it wasn't going to charities honestly i don't even know what that money was going to I forgot to mention that we did go on a Six Flags trip, so I guess that trip was funded by that money. But I really don't know because when you look at it, it's like we sell the candy and then we get our pay from doing that. We get some of the profit. I wonder where that money was going to. 
anyways i have no idea where that money was going to but all i know is that we would get paid on sundays so fast forward to the weekend the weekend which is where shit gets real on the weekend is we usually when there's more kids working right so on the weekend it was packed it would probably be like 10 of us in the back of this van this minivan 10 of us Ma mind you this van takes like maximum eight people two, two the two people in the front seat and then like six people in the back Th three on each row that's like the max right so it would be like 10 of us in the back 10 kids in the back on on those two rows and obviously the big dog and little dog so on the weekend they picked us up like at like eight in the morning nine in the morning mad early because on the weekends we would usually go out of we would go out of brooklyn so the first weekend that we went we went to staten island and which is where the white people reside you know the trumpies whatever there was more new kids on the weekend before we actually went to our destination we went to we went to long island which is where like the office was the office was in long island i don't know what this office was but it's basically where they like restock on snacks and stuff like that and like candy whatever and then they would just leave us in the van for like 20 minutes so every every weekend before we actually go to wherever you're trying to go we'll go to long island which is where the office was we go to long island and they dropped me off at a cvs again cvs was like my drop or whatever it was kind of raining that day too i think i was i was at that cvs from like 11 in the morning to 6 p.m in the night I would be standing out in front of these stores for like the longest. I was literally doing like eight plus hours at the age of 13. That's child labor, okay? And that's not even legal, you know what I mean? But yeah, like I was I was mad young doing like eight plus hours. I mean, baby, I've been a hustler. I think I made like 12 sales that day. But fast forward to the Sunday. The Sunday, um, it was mandatory for us to come in. That's what they said because um, apparently Sunday was payday. And if you know me, then you know on Sundays, I usually don't go places. And on Sundays, I usually go to church. So my brother, my cousin and I, we had to go in that Sunday to work. And my first paycheck, I think it was like, I think it was 80 bucks. I think my first paycheck was 80 bucks. Basically what we were doing was tricking these white people, well, scamming these white people into buying these 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 products, which was not even going for, to a good cause. We would say that it was going to a good cause, like, but it wasn't. We were just swindling these people for their money. I mean, I am all for taking the white people's money. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. It's like, nah. Yeah, like, we were taking these people's money, jacking that it was for a good cause when I don't know what the hell that money was going to. Besides my paycheck, I don't know what it was going to. Fast forward, like, a month into the job. Mind you, this was around, like, fall time. Fall transitioning kind of into winter. So, it was getting brick. Like, I, my hands used to be, my hands used to be getting mad cold. I used to be getting cold. Like, on my first day, bro, I was cold as hell. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, but one sale is $10. So, some, sometimes people wouldn't buy an item, but they would give a donation. So, for me, sometimes, if I'm mad hungry, I don't, I, nah, not even. If I felt like just eating something, what I would have did was use some of the change that did not add up to a sale yet. And I'll probably buy like a hot chocolate from Starbucks or something like that. Or just anything like from a store around me. I remember once I bought pizza, which was like $3 in Long Island. Um, I bought hot chocolate and a, a cookie and a, a cake pop from Starbucks. Like I was, I was taking some of their money just a little bit though. And um, sometimes I would eat from the candy, the candy bucket, the candy bin. Because I just felt like it. Like, I'm the one that's standing out here doing this. So, I'm free to take any snacks. They would know. Sometimes they would know. But for me, they never knew that I was doing that. Because I was tacked with it. Too tacked with it. Yeah, and sometimes we would go to Long Island. Sometimes we will go to Staten Island. On the weekdays, we'll stay in Brooklyn. But on the weekends, we'll go to the white, the, the white, white neighborhoods. You feel me? Yeah, like, I was making bank. I was making bank for an 8th grader, a 13-year-old. I was making bank. Yes, I did that. And you would do it too for a check. I was an employee and I was gonna get employed a month in that time period. <laughs> I was been a hustler, baby. Like my mind raised no lazy. It's like nah. Oh yeah, with that money, I bought myself a new pair of shoes. I bought myself a phone. Yeah, I was I was low-key balling, no cap. I bought myself an Android though. It was it was an iPhone, it was a droid. 
but i still bought myself my first phone oh yeah and one bro one day one day right that was in i think that was in long island right i was in front of a supermarket sales was kind of slow that day i didn't make od close to when i was gonna get picked up because usually they pick us up around like eight like the lady almost close to when i was gonna get picked up bro this man this white man walks up to me bro and he gives me three hundred dollars in cash he did not ask, he did not ask, oh, anything about the program, but he was like, I seen you standing here, so I'm just gonna give you this. He handed me $300 in cash, bro. I was so, my jaw dropped. I'm like, did this man really just give me $300 in cash? I think that was actually an angel, bro, because this man just gave it to me and he walked away. Like, he just walked away you know what i you know what i did i actually gave them that money i handed that money in as part of my sales you know me now i, I would have pocketed that money but i was a good child i gave them that money 300 dollars as part of my sales and that day I, th I made the most sales that day i think i handed in 420 around there so yeah that was the highest amount of sales i had i had 40 yeah 42 sales and i was so dumb i actually gave them that 300 dollars. i should have took that shit myself damn i handed that shit in and i forgot to mention that my brother the kid that was already working before us from our school and i were like the best ones at that job like we were the ones that was pulling in the most sales every week bro we was just nice like that so in conclusion this is my resume for any retail job that's trying to hire me i'm a good salesman i would be a great sales rep and the money the money was hitting though or whatever because if you know me growing up my parents never gave me money for things that i didn't need like they never gave me money for food or anything like that they only gave me money for like important things but yeah one of the new kids bro that came one some girl that was there she pocketed the money or she stole the money from them two it was like two boys it was one day that we went to long island they stole the money and they also stole somebody bikes very ghetto in long island they stole somebody bikes and they never came back to the van when they came to pick them up they were not there oh i remember bro once we were in staten island and then the cops got called on us the cops got called on us in the, the white van somebody was like oh there's this van selling candy with children in the back yeah basically the cops got called on us and my cousin actually got picked up by the cops in staten island because i guess he was like the last yeah he was the last one to get picked up bro and it was mad dark and then the cops ended up coming to us so, and about that my cousin got picked up by the cops because the van ended up breaking down and then big dog could not find the key bro so my cousin was the last one that he had to pick up and he was waiting there for mad long so the cops came to pick him up because they saw they thought it was suspicious and whatnot and then they ended up dropping him where we was at bro that same day they couldn't find the key bro big dog could not find the key he was out here till like nine o'clock and we was we was in Staten island at nine o'clock we weren't even on our way home yet and we ended up getting home around like 11 almost close to 12. My mom and my aunt was tripping. It was like, oh, where are you guys? Da, da, da. Very much ghetto. Very much never again. At least I was making money as a teenager. My brother and I ended up doing this job for like the rest of the year, I think. I'm not sure when we quit. Um, But the kid that was from my school, he kept, he continued doing it. We were the last one standing. Actually, no, the kid that was from my school was the last one standing but my brother and i we called it quits my cousin quit like two weeks into it because he was trash and he didn't he wasn't making any sales and he didn't like the job when i applied for jobs i put that as my experience especially when i applied to retail so yeah i was balling kind of loki the money was kind of good but yeah, that's basically how like they had us scamming people, swindling yeah, people. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this story time or whatever. It was probably all over the place, but I tried my best to explain because I'm terrible at explaining things. Um, if you guys want more story times, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. And yeah, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.